if I wear a neck roll, I'm throwing at that guy. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you see a DB with a neck roll, yeah, throw at him. Right? They are yeah, throwing they, at him yeah. immediately. He can't, he, can't twist, <laughs> he can't get it right yet. Yeah. So yeah, he is going. getting thrown at immediately. First play <laughs> from Joe. Check, check, check. Check, oh. check, check, and point at him, right? Oh. And they point, going right at that guy. At him. Oh right God. at that guy. No way. No. Don't even come over here. No. Thank y'all for listening and tuning in. This is Peanut Tillman, and this is the NFL Players Second Acts Podcast. I got my guy Roman Harper with me with the Pepto-Bismo pink shirt on. What's Hit up? Him with the flex, flex one dog. One time. Come on, uh, baby. Uh, ah, there we go. I got a flex because we, we got a big timer in here who's you definitely known for hitting some weights and other people. Mm. And uh, first and foremost, before we get there, let me thank all of our viewers, all of our listeners out there. Wherever you listen, pick up your podcast with us, Apple Podcasts iHeartRadio. Thank you for always listening and tuning in because we're doing big things on this podcast, continuing to tell more and more stories. So make sure you give us a like, a review, click that follow button, leave a couple comments, share, and hey, tell a friend to tell a friend to do what, Peanut? Tell a friend. There it is. All right, Peanut, who is our guest, our next guest? Because we had a couple today, but who is our next guest? I'm really looking forward to it because he wore, I mean, I wore the same number as him. You did. Well, I got to roll my sleeves up because I got to show y'all I got some guns. And if y'all listening right now, this next brother is pretty damn swole. So I'm going to roll my sleeves up for this intro right here. Ah, let's you know go. Let, let him feel the, the let's price. Go. He's the biggest muscle in the arm right now, 70%. Uh, this next guy, 17 years in the league. Yes, sir. How many? 17. Mm. You know what I'm saying? 17 years in the league, four-time Pro Bowler, three-time All-Pro. He is a member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, All-Decade 2000s team, TV and radio broadcaster. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Lorenzo Neal to the show. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank 17 you. 17 years. I, I don't even drive that. Yeah. God, come on, man. I, don't, I, I got lucky. I don't know how I did it. But I'll tell you right now, I, I could let you, Peanut, introduce me anytime because you gave me a couple extra accolades there that I would like wish that would happen. <laughs> I want to get in that HOA Hall of Fame. Aren't there yet, but you know what? I'd love to be there. So thank you for that. Appreciate well, no, it. I thought I said the All Decade team. Yeah, That's was, what you meant. Definitely All Decade. Yeah, but he wants that Hall of Fame. Oh, you want the Hall of Fame? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I Peanut, I need you. We're going to manifest that. Okay, let's yeah, manifest, manifest it. it. I like it. Okay. Nobody else has played 17. Let's get it. Nobody right. else has done it. I'm with you. Um, all right, Lo, because you played when it was real, real ball going on. What was your first welcome to the NFL moment? Well, you got to realize when I get drafted in 93, I go to the Dome Patrol. Ricky Jackson, yeah. Von Johnson, City yeah. Champ, man, these dudes. I didn't they, even realize you got uh, drafted. <laughs> I went to New Orleans and it was like life shock. And I'm a little California boy. Yeah. At the Fresno State. And I go to New Orleans. You hear me, baby? Yeah, and, that's and how oh, they yeah, talk. My baby. You know what I'm saying? I oh, go, yeah, go on chef. a date. It's like, hey, you going over for groceries? I'm going to make groceries. You got to make groceries. Hey, I got to go make groceries. Get that you ain't going to do me nothing, no. Yeah, I'm like, what? A like, young lady asked me, you want a piece? I'm like, can I have a piece of gum? You want a piece of gum? Yeah. I'm like, can I answer the question? I'm like, hey, I mean, still I, I, was like, I was in the, I was in the big easy dog. So, I mean, I got Ricky Jackson, Pig Golf, you know, you know, Frank Warren, yeah. all these jumpy gathers. I mean, I had them old heads. Yeah. I mean, and uh, the brothers had the trophy case, you know, the gold. I'm like, man, Frank Warren outside doing, you know, training camp. It's freaking hot. You know, in New Orleans, don't break. He's smoking a cigarette. I'm like, hey, man, you know, it's smoking. It's hot out there. Man, get out of my Facebook. I'm like, man, dudes out there smoking. <laughs> it's like, dude, I mean, just cig cigarettes. It's like, it's crazy, though, how the league and how it was. Yes. You see those guys and how they just – went about their business and just tough old men. So I got welcomed into the league by those guys. I remember in training camp in Wisconsin. Well, across Wisconsin, that's where we have our training camp. Ricky Jackson, Von Johnson, those guys are shooting some dice, playing cards. So I was like, okay, man, hey, look, Brad Muster's the fullback they're bringing from Chicago Bears. So he's the starter. I'm going to be backing up, but he's hurt. So his hamstrings hurt, so I'm starting. So I'm the only fullback, other fullback on the roster. So Vaughn and those guys are shooting cards that night, and I'm playing dice. I'm like, man, let me buy you guys some beer, buy you guys pizza. Take hey, look, okay, tomorrow, look, take it easy on me. I'm the only one guy there. So boom, I go out there. So boom, first play, we run lead. I look over at Ricky. Okay, lead, boom, hit me, knock me on my ass. I'm like, man, I ain't buying y'all pizza here no more. <laughs> but no, it, it, they welcomed me in. They made me tough, though. Jim Moore and those guys, tough. 
It was tough. That's when the league was real, though. They, oh, my. Like, real, the real two-a-days. The, like, yes. Yeah, yes. The real can, can I Can I share my first experience of meeting Lorenzo Neal? Please do. All right, so. I ask you that. Uh, yeah, because, uh -oh. yeah, we talked about this. And, all right, Lorenzo, don't get too scared. Okay. So, it's in New Orleans. Okay. All right, I guess you had come in town to visit. And you were visiting your friend Mike Carney. Carney. All right? <laughs> crazy Mike Carney. Oh, crazy. It, it, but he loves lifting weights. Oh, yeah. He loves lifting oh, yeah. weights. Yeah. And so Carney played fullback. Yeah. Yes. And so I guess I don't even know why you were in town visiting I, I, Yeah, guy. I was doing some work in town. But Mike Carney, call it, backdrop to that, is when he's in college, he contacts me, wants me to train him, work him out, mm -hmm. train him. So me and Mike Carney's good friends. So train him. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so he gets, drafted, he gets drafted to the Saints. He's there. Yes, I come to town. So, they, we're in Destrehan, where I live, where Mike Carney lived. Lorenzo Nils out there. They, I mean, I show up a little bit later. These guys have been hanging out, quote unquote, yeah, for a while probably. It. Yeah. So, so next thing you know, we're outside a pop. bar. They had this place had some great wings. So I used to go there all the time. Yeah. It's called the Pub. And so next thing you know, Mike Carney has this great idea because Lorenzo Neal not only is a great football player but also knows some wrestling. Wrestling. Yes. Yeah. And so we're outside in a parking lot, mm. and Mike Carney's going to take this time to challenge Lorenzo Neal to put him down. And man, this is the most entertaining thing <laughs> in my life I think I've oh, ever yes. seen. And yes. I'm like, dude, yes. these guys are really out here just wrestling in the street. Full clothes. Full clothes. Yeah. Mm. And Carney, and, and he's not winning, not Nathaniel. <laughs> My man Lowe is putting him down time after time after time. Just uh, da, uh, bomb, put him down. And I'm like, dude. What about the second time? Da, 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 bomb, put him down again. Even the third time? Da, bop, 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 da, put him down again. Damn. I was like, damn, this is like, I mean, this was like my rookie year, second yeah, yeah, year in the yeah. league. And this the was very was young. There. Who was else? The running back was Steckle. Yeah, 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 Stecker. Yeah, we Stecker was there, too. There. Yeah, yeah. Stecker like, lived out there, too. He wanted to challenge me. I'm like, dude, I'm all there for wrestling. There's no way you can pin me in, in, in a minute. And I'm like, dude, Mike, I was ranked number three in the country. I'll pin you in a minute. No way. You know, he's Mike Carney, big boy. Yeah. I'm like, Mike, you can't go a minute. He tried. <laughs> no, that's the minute. I just got there. I was just like, oh, you just what? walked. You like, what the hell? What yeah, am I what walking is into? What's going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Carney, my fullback's getting just done in by Lorenzo yeah. Neal, which I was a big fan of. Yeah, but I mean, hey, this is my welcome. Uh, to, this is my first time ever meeting this. Totally man. remember that. Cool. And uh, yeah, that. I'm glad you totally remember that. Yes, yes I was there. Yes, you know, yes. That's a, good a fly one. on the wall. So 2006 was magical for me for so many reasons. I was there. I was in Chicago. We ended up going to the Super Bowl. We ended up losing, but it was a good season. Yes. I think for you, it's I was different. drafted. You were drafted. It's a good year for all of us. Yes. You got drafted. We beat y'all NFC Championship game. We ended up going to the Super Bowl. For you, it was a little bit losing. Different. Why do you say that? Because you, I mean, let's just tell the whole story. All right, Pepto business. <laughs> <laughs> so, so 2006 was magical for you. A different reason. That's the year Ladainian Tomlinson he he broke the uh that the single, single, the single, single season. season yes touchdown touchdown record yes. right. How amazing was it or how how great was it for block blocking for him that season? How I, amazing I, I, was that? He was absolutely Superman without the cape. When you watch Ladainian Tomlinson, you guys see him. I mean, trying to tackle that guy is, is, is you got a better chance chance of scratching the lines button in a telephone booth. I mean, he's that magical to be able to play with him. And here's a guy who's a better person than he was a player. Yeah. And just to watch his work, work ethic and what he meant to the Chargers organization in the national football league, breaking that record was unbelievable. I remember playing against the Denver Broncos and what was a 90, 90 toss man that we called to play. And I have a kick out. I said, all right, LT, get on my hip and don't dip. Let's ride. So I said, I got you. So we start to play, pitch it out. I see the corner, the safety comes up. I'm getting ready to go block him. Believe it or not, I trip, start stumbling. I'm like trying to get my balance. And I'm like, oh my goodness. I fall on the play. The safety's right there. The corner's outside. How about LT? Sits them down, both them down, still scores a touchdown. I just jumped him and just start clapping like I'm a cheerleader. Like, I mean, so yeah, when you watch that play where he breaks the record, bro, I eat dust. I fall on that play. And you're supposed to get one. Yeah, at least one. <laughs> Shoot, I wasn't trying to help him out. I was point shaving. Uh, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to look that one up. I, yes. had, I had the opportunity that to bad. work out with him in Scripps Ranch. Okay. He had yeah. a yeah. He uh, Todd Durkin used to have a yep. place called Fitness Quest. Yeah. I don't know if you worked out there Absolutely. a couple of times with him. Yeah. And he used to always tell me he would uh, like his stiff arm. He was like, yeah, Peanut. One of my coaches, I think it was when he was at what uh, when he was in college, he used to say he used to uh, 
hit the, the rack, the squat rack. And he was like, yeah, my coach would just make me just, ah. Uh, and he would just slam this squat rack every single time. Just like, sorry, if I'm, I'm, I'm hurting you with these little baby <laughs> arms. But uh, he would just hit this squat rack every single time. And I was just like, yo, I, I tried it once. And, like, my whole farm and stuff started. And I was like, yeah, I, I ain't, I'm I ain't built like that. I'm good. I couldn't do it. No, I, I remember uh, L, I came in the hole, meet LT in the hole. And we were yeah. playing, actually, in London. Okay. In, like, 2007 or eight. And literally, he spent off me so clean in the middle of the huddle. Took it like 40-something. Oh, yeah. I did tackle him like the very next play, though, in the red zone. It like really felt good about myself. Was it a TFL? And, no, I, it was damn near close, if not. But <laughs> I, it made me feel a lot better because I just missed him for 45. And then... Amazing, though. It right? is. It was, it was like he was there and then he was gone. And he hit like a, a hop, spin, like jump, spin, and move. And I just... He wasn't there anymore. No. Very, yeah. very uh, to, talented. To his credit, though, we'll give him his flowers and everything, but we got to give you your flowers, too, though, because that was the same year you made first team all pro. Like, you you had an unbelievable year that year as well yourself. So I, I we give credit and we tip our hat to him, but you was out there balling, too, doing your thing. Oh, no question. But you look at LT, and, and that's why you could talk about this guy, because when a guy is arguably top five running backs that ever played this game, mm -hmm. and when you see the way he just played it, he made my job. I made all pro because I had LT. Yeah, a lot of guys on that team made all pro on that team because you had a guy like 21, because if he was even, he was leaving. Yep. So it was just amazing. But just that whole process of playing with that guy, playing with, you know, Corey Dillon, one of the another best-kept secrets running back. Corey Dillon was most athletic, one of the most athletic big men that I've ever played with. I was like, I mean, how tall was he, too? Because he was a tall, tall big running back, right? Six two, six three. Yeah, yeah. And Almost Hill, like Deuce McAllister, though. And, and but he more athletic. You, yes, and if he would hit you, I've seen him knock out a safety before. When he hit him, the guy was out before he hit the ground. Corey Dillon ran hard. He ran angry. And this is a guy that, I, out of all the running backs that were elite, he probably didn't train. He probably was the, the guy that trained the least. Yeah. I mean, and he was still that amazing. You see when he went up to New England and one of Oh, he crushed it. Crushed it. <laughs> Killing everybody. Corey <laughs> Dillon. Running through souls. Oh, my taking God. Taking their heart. Uh, yes. Dude, it was a monster. And, you know, you look at Eddie George, another great black yeah. that I've blocked for. Eddie George was the epitome of hard work. That's his name. Next to his name should be hard work. This guy just overachiever, grinder, hard work, did everything right. Just a great guy and a great back. But with Corey Dillon, how he was able to do it, with not training, I mean, wouldn't touch a weight and still looked like he looked like a Greek god. It was amazing. And then, you know, my, my stint in, 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 in Tampa Bay, blocking for work Mike Allstott and work done. We had a backfield called Pony when that was me and Work, and then Rhino was me and Mike Allstott. Just to be able to block for those two guys, it was, it was, a, it was absolutely amazing to have – that type of a career, being able to block for guys of that statue who just made me look good. All right, talking about that 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 type of career. So eleven straight years, you block for a one thousand yard rusher. That's an amazing. Um, what does that like? Where do you rank that at as accomplishments in your career? I, you know what? I I love it. I mean, because those guys appreciated what I did for them. Mm -hmm. And when you're a play fullback, it's one of the positions that you have to be selfish. It's not about you. You're not going to get your name in the lights. You're not going to, you know, be uh, getting touchdowns, a lot of touchdowns. It's just a position that you just go out there and you have to know what you have to do in order to let those guys get their name in the lights. And though every one of those guys that we named and talked to talked about those guys appreciated what I was going to do for them. Even, you know, fast forward, one of my last years in the league, the year in Baltimore, went to the AFC Championship. We lost to the Steelers. They ended up, end up beating – Great in Arizona in, oh, Arizona. in, in that, Arizona, that, yeah. that Arizona year. I remember blocking for a guy by the name of Ray, Ray Rice, but LaRon <clears throat> McClain was there too. Yep. LaRon was a played fullback. He had 980 some yards as a fullback. And with the playoffs, he had over a thousand. I think that was one of the biggest feats for me because here's a guy that was a fullback and played like a tailback. Well, you know, had the opportunity, but to carry that guy over to get him a thousand yards and just the commitment that it was to do that, but he didn't get it in the regular season. But playoffs, you so you count that. I, I like to throw that I in, but it. he's yeah, count it right. It's a, I it's count a game. It. Lebron's an Alabama guy. Okay, shout out, there shout out go. to County High School. Oh my goodness, Tuscaloosa County. Shout I, out. I knew he was doing. I knew he was going there. I knew he was going there. <laughs> so that was those, those guys, man. It was it was it was all fun, but it, it did make you feel good. It, all right, so all right, well let, let's put a little bit more pressure on you. Can you name? Thomas says five, but I you got eleven years. Can you name seven of these running backs that you blocked for that went four thousand? Oh, it definitely. It's LT. All right, one, LT. Right? Eddie George. Eddie George. Corey Dillon. Corey Dillon's the third. 
Adrian Morrell. Oh, Adrian Morrell. Yeah. I didn't know if you were going to remember that one. Okay. Come on, AD, Adrian, Adrian Morrell. Adrian guy. Morrell. All right. Morrell was my guy, Mike. Come on. Come on. So, you know, and uh, so those were, if you look at it, so the, no, no, nobody knew. It was, it was, uh, that, was that was him. Adrian. Yeah, and Warwick Dunn. And Dunny. Yep. Yeah. And then LT was multiple years. Yeah, so, yeah LT, so. it was easy. Yeah, it was like, the five. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And you mentioned LeBron already. So. Yeah. I mean, it was a good job. See, you know? Good job. Now, yeah, this as is... old as I am, you know, I still, you know, every now and then I forget. Now, but... didn't you rush for a K? Didn't you rush for a, a stack? No, no. How... I started out in the league, leading the league in rushing my right. first year. I started up, uh, P, P, you didn't oh. want to see me. You didn't want to see me. My That's first, what I, yes. First two, first two games, I, I was leading the league. That's in I was done. <laughs> I, I broke the ankle. Bro. So first two games played against, I think the first game was against the Oilers, the Houston Oilers. Like, boy, I had about 95. Second week against the Atlanta Falcons, I broke the first first run, 74 down the line. Yeah. Went, 80, went 74. And nobody came and ran me down. That's old Held school. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the old school term. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's You didn't want to fall. No. That's why, that's why you ran so hard, right? That, that term, you, come on, dog. You know how that. Oh, oh. Oh, my God. Oh, boy. the old Metro oh, yes. in Minnesota. Yes. I'm dating myself now. That's I'm how old I am. I oh you played God. the old Metrodome? I did. One year. Oh, oh my God. How Elbow that? was trash. Trash. Fell down. Trash. Get that big strawberry. Yes. How about oh. the Steelers old stadium? I didn't get to play in that one. Okay. You know who sucked to the Raiders? That fall yes. on that grass. And you never Because yes. they played baseball. Yeah. The I, I've been in there. You never out wanted there. to you, fall. You, oh. The dirt was terrible. Nobody wanted to go over there. Oh, nobody. The, 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 it was just, just, nobody like, wanted I'm, to go over there. He's going to get this first down. Okay. I'm going to him when he yes. gets the grass. Yes. I'm going to just act like Dude, he's stealing. Nobody right. wanted to go right. over there. Get right. an extra three right. yards. Yes. Okay, now I'm going to Now I'm going to tackle him. Right. Nobody would have no, gone there. That is great. I'm with you. I'm with you. Oh, my God. I hated that. So glad they yeah, got that oh my stadium. Goodness. Right. So um, I, I, got, I got one for you. The era that you played in, 17 years, the mentality, the what mentality did you have to be in to, to block the way you blocked back in that day? Because today we really don't see a fullback no. use anymore. No. no, they call him an H-back. They call, right, right. Yeah, like it's, right. it's the game's right. completely changed. And your style of play and what you've done, like what mentality did you bring into a game? Well, it was me. It was simple. My grandmother, I mean, she was 97 when she died. Her name was Viola. My grandfather's name was Oliver. He was 94 when he died. They came from Fort Worth, Texas with six of my brothers. My uncle Joe wasn't born yet. So they came on the back of a truck from Fort Worth to California. They were sharecroppers. Mm -hmm. And so I remember my grandmother, I was just got named California Athlete of the Year, Valley Player of the Year. They, Janet Evans, they said, Janet's the queen, Lorenzo's the king. I beat out Quincy Watts, Curtis Conway, all those guys for one one athletic player in the whole state of California. And my grandma said, come here, sit down. I want to talk to you. And she had an old beat-up station wagon. She goes, don't worry, son, I ain't going to give you that station wagon. I said, thank God, because I didn't want that. It was that bad. <laughs> and so she just told me the story about how she came from Texas, and she was a supervisor, and she chopped cotton. After you chop cotton, you pick it in bags. You do that. She was over like 20, 30 people. She was pregnant with Uncle Joe. Wednesday night, she went in labor. Thursday, she, you know, had, had him. Friday, she went back to work. She goes, and I said, Grandma, why don't you just take off Saturday and Sunday? You already, you, you know, you was already going to be off Saturday and Sunday. Why don't you just not take, come in Friday and just act one more day? And she said, because over 20 people, and I didn't want the boss to know that. She said, so never take a boss, never take a vacation when the boss is around, they'll realize how much they don't need you. I didn't get that when I was in high school. Mm. Later on in my career, they say, you know, you can't make the can't make the club in the tub. Yeah, so what true. she was trying to tell me, never take a vacation when the boss is around. I knew that I had to make myself, you know, not replaceable. I knew that I had, even when I was hurt, necks hurt, all those things, I wore the cowboy collar. I knew that I had to play this position because you knew the fullback position, you only get a certain amount of plays. Mm -hmm. Usually they want to spread out, go nickel and dime and, you know, 12 personnel and, you know, and don't go 21 personnel. So it was an, it meant something. So when I get on that field, it was about I am going to end pose my will on every single linebacker, every single safety that I see, I'm going to, because I'm going to make these coaches play me. So that's yep. what I drove me to play the game as hard as I could for 17 years. It's like, no, I'm going to show them that, no, you ain't going to replace me. I'm not going to take a break and I'm going to try to run through you. I I mean, you lead me right into my question. Um, and that is, uh, how much pride do you take? Clearly, you take pride in your work. Uh, hearing the story about from your grandmother Sure. Coming from from Fort Worth, um, that you played in 221 consecutive games without missing, like that's a long time. Long time to play the position that you played. 
to play through injuries consecutively. The, c- consecutively and continue to show your will upon your opponents. Yeah, it, it was tough. There were some games, man, I didn't know. I mean, missed maybe Wednesday and, like, barely could limp through practice. But, like, hey, coach, you're gonna, I'm going to hold you out. No, I'm playing. You have to have that determination. It was tough. It was really tough, and it was really hard to make it that long, those many games. And the only reason I did, didn't did after that, because I broke my ankle against the, the, the Titans. I remember that game. So I was missed four weeks and came back, and that's when broke the streak. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You missed four weeks yeah, with a broke, broken ankle? Yeah, broke the tibia, non-weight-bearing bone in the leg. and uh, Like a, a fibula? Yeah, and then they, they went in, put bolt, put screws in it. Oh, I broke my fibula in high school. Yeah. Shout out. Four weeks later, baby. Wait, let's go. Let's me too. Let's get it, baby. See, come on. Know how we do it, baby. I didn't know. Let's go. Put me in the game, coach. Put me in the game. I'm, I'm glad I'm not in that group. I'm I'm, 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 I'm okay with that. I'm, You're like, I don't want that. Yeah, exactly. I don't want that. I'm good. It is a non-weight bearing bone, though. You learn a lot about it. Yes. Yes, yeah. you do. <laughs> you yes, do. you do. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm okay not being in that club. It's it's, it's cool. So you you're too pretty. You never got, got just get out of the way or never got never beat up pretty bad or no i got beat up okay i'm bad. just asking i don't, yeah. don't get mad oh, hold on bro hold no on. come on now i'm almost a I don't thousand want that. tackles as a okay corner okay now. okay i don't I'm want that small you know corners you know y'all I, yes okay i'm, I'm yeah. different though okay, okay. I'm, I'm different though. okay because y'all didn't want that smoke y'all corners didn't want that smoke i'm almost a thousand tackles as a, as a corner okay almost a thousand that means so i, I want to know this all right, now we, we, since we're well. checking out how tough we all are i want to know this like, do you think you would have played 20 years in today's game where they can no longer cut the guys coming at them? Oh. Because there's no way I would have took you up high. You're already sure you stat, oh. you got the low, low center of grab. Oh. You, you would probably destroy people Be now. Oh, <laughs> my God. Guys, linebackers would come in and cut me. Right. Corners That's what I'm wondering. they take my legs out. Oh, oh, peanut, I'm me and you. Oh, oh boy. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, nowadays you, yes. you, I'm they can't every cut. every time. Nobody yeah. could, like, defenders, right. I'm like, right. dude. There's no way I'd want to take on set of edge. No. Have you seen you San Francisco, can- how they set it? No. They bring the tackle, and they bring him in motion. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, with Trent Williams. Him, with Big Trent. They bring uh, him full oh, speed. Full speed. And they ain't got a Pole chance. Cone. They have no chance. Pole corner. Yeah, pole corner. Oh, my God. Pole corner. They don't want that smoke. No. They don't Corners want that smoke. Like, no. Don't want that smoke. Yeah, I'd, I'd played a long time. And, you know what I mean? Oh, like, you played 17, but you Trent, probably played 21. Yeah, no, at least 20. <laughs> no, because cause you – I think I took at least two years off my career in training camp. Yeah. I mean, we had freaking – Jim Moore was tough. Yes. Playoffs. I mean, you had a guy – He that, told me, like, how tough his training camps were. Man, twice a day. I mean, full pads, nine on seven, goal line. This is – I mean, Jim Moore didn't care, bro. That's and, and, and then mentality. old school. And then I went Jets with Bill Parcells. mm so, I mean, I had these old school coaches that Marty shot. I had coaches that, okay, we're going to make this thing physical. Marty Ball. Marty Ball. That's Marty Ball. You <laughs> Marty know that. Ball. So, yeah, I think I would have got I, at least, I'd say two more. Yeah, because I, I, I just thought about it. Training camp. Because, you know, with guys no longer being able to go low on blockers. Right. I think I'm like, oh, I mean. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I, at least, really I just got two more. Okay. Two more. So you and I got something in common. Uh, Pro Bowls, you made them. Mine, mine came pretty late in uh, later in my career. Yeah, yours came pretty late. late. Why do you think it? Why do you think it took so long for you to get your first Pro Bowl? You know what? I I don't know because I was like, it was. I tell you what, it was. It was pretty upset. I was disappointed. Like, I'm, you know, you you know how it is, bro. Yeah. And you, you go out there, you ball. You just like, ball. all right, yeah. It's me. I, this. I got yes. the stats. I got this. I got that. My guy I'm blocking for, he has this. I got the picks. I got the tackles. I got the forced fumbles. Oh, yeah, for sure, I'm going in. And then your coach, he reads it, and you're and, like, and your you names don't get caught. And you're like, yeah, you just, what? Yeah, you don't eat, but you don't say nothing, right? You're just like, oh, you're like, no big deal. But you know you just pissed. The next season, you're like, all right, all right, I'm a member. And yeah. then the thing about it is, like, I think it's a, let's be real. Popularity. Popularity I mean, no all day. Let's, okay, all day knows. long. Everybody, everybody come on. All day long. Hey, everybody guys are that. just going to get that. And I, and I was like, man, are you kidding me? I said, okay. I remember I go out there playing against the linebackers. I said, "Are right, y'all gonna vote for me a Pro Bowl?" Boom! I mean, I would be telling them that for on the field. No, no, no. I love it. I'm telling you because it's them. I, They're yeah, the ones that I are said, voted. This is what you guys want to do. I would I'll ask to kill spikes. Ask them. I'm like, man, I'm gonna wear you out today. I'm the judge, the jury. I'm find you guilty mm. today. I'm mm. Mad, bro. Yeah. <laughs> pull up. That's that's the one I used <laughs> they to hate. Pull up. Yeah. Pull up. Yeah. <laughs> With your chest. They didn't want that smoke, man. Yeah. You, you know they dogged you, bro. We should, yeah. you, been, you know at least three. A couple, mm. you knew you you was there. I think they need to do 
uh, not do away with the Pro Bowl. Do they got to do something with it as far as how they vote, vote because yeah. I think Anton Winfield Jr. made All Pro. He's the first team All Pro, and He's he dead. didn't make a Pro Bowl. Yes, right. Like, how do you? How does that even happen? And, and look, man, I had some of my best years, and I didn't go to the Pro Bowl. Yeah, we all. And, have. and it was like, oh well. Maybe he was too dirty. And, but, you know, and then your GM comes over, you're like, hey, look, we look at this one stat who's maybe impacted more, made more impact, like you led the league in this, this, this. And I'm just like, you know what? That does absolutely nothing. Nothing for me right now. Right. You want that pro- right. I bro. want the Pro Bowl, okay? And so, uh, yes, it is you very want to be disappointing. Able to, add it to your resume, yes. yes, and it's pretty fun to go over to Hawaii and have fun. Yes, right? sir. It does. Yes, yes it sir. does. You, know, you didn't yes. just go to Hawaii, baby. Let's go yes. to Hawaii. Tell it's, me about the island, daddy. Yeah, yeah. Tell and, me about and, that island, daddy. and make sure nobody else knows what room you're staying in, because the vet yes. will put that stuff on your room. I lied every time. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I lied every time. No was, one knew what room I was. Oh, in. Oh man, I was John White. Yeah, <laughs> John White. No, no, no. Seriously, bro. I already got my name down. What? <laughs> Actually, the guy at Reebok, that's his name. Remember John? He was a, uh, and, and I was like, man, I use his name. He's like, you're using my name. I didn't even know it was him with Reebok. <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah, get your room. The guys said guys build 3000 No doubt. 30000 bucks. Oh. For all those that don't know, that is a whole deal. Oh, when, yeah. it, the, especially oh, yeah. old school guys. Oh, yeah. That was like yeah. a whole deal when hazing oh. and all that stuff was very prevalent. And Peyton yeah. was the best. <laughs> Peyton, get the rookies. Hey, man, I mean, you, man you're a good receiver. What you got one more year on your deal? Hey, man, uh, let's grab some dinner. What, 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 I'm going to call you, man. I'm going to call you, man, and, and we'll grab some <laughs> dinner. Yeah, Peyton, would do, Peyton would set him up so cold. Peyton was the coldest at setting guys up. Mm. And I'm sure that, that receiver was like, dang. Yeah, Peyton, Peyton Manning. Yeah, exactly. To, he's really giving right. me some, some right. sound advice. Right, it's right. Peyton Manning. Right. How could I? Never went to dinner with him. Yeah. <laughs> Just drunk with him at the pool, and before he knew it, he phoned, oh, the, I see guys <laughs> crying. My bill, I didn't do this. <laughs> I didn't do this. Didn't they get Fox one time? I think they got Fox. I think they got Fox with like a bill that was like 15, 15 Gs. Oh, I believe it. From everybody just racking stuff up on his hotel room. Oh, my God. All right. Yeah. So tell me what type of mentality. Well, you already talked about the mentality, but how much pride did you take in making three straight Pro Bowls at the age of, what is it, 35, 36, and 37? Yeah. yeah. Uh, coming late in your uh, later on in your career, like how did you get to that point? And um, what type of pride do you take in that now? Because we talked about making Pro Bowls. I mean, you probably wanted them more in your in your 20s. Sure. Well, you probably could have enjoyed it a little bit more. Not saying you didn't enjoy it in your 30s, but get it. 20s, you know how we are mentality-wise. Right, right. Well, I just think that this way, anything you do in life, you got to keep working. And Peter tell you, it's like, man, you, you miss a couple, and you're like, man, Okay, is it ever going to happen? And you start to wonder. I remember in Tennessee, I made all pro, all Joe team, all those teams, and I didn't make the Pro Bowl. And it was, like, so frustrating. The one thing that's holding you back. The one thing that's, like, you want. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. And so it's crazy because if you work and you continue to work, and no matter what you do in anything in life, I mean, I do real estate now and do a bunch of stuff. I miss some deals, but I'll get a deal. I'll put in four or five offers on a house, and it's like, man, am I gonna? when am I going to get one? And all of a sudden, the one that I want, a sweet deal comes in. And it's like, but you got to stay consistent. You have to stay the plan. You have to stay the course. You can't deviate. And that's what, and I tell people all the time, working will, wishing won't. The will to win means nothing without the will to prepare. You got to be prepared that it's going to happen. And that's how that's how I run my life now. That's what I did when I was playing. And believe it or not, two and fourteen, two and fourteen, Pro Bowl. Cincinnati, really, Cincinnati Bengals, first only player on the team made the Pro Bowl. Two and fourteen Pro. So that was the first Pro Bowl that I went to on the worst team that and on the worst team in the league right. that I played because people recognize what you were bringing to the table. The only Bengal that made it. So. It's just the consistency is to say, I'm not going to quit. And if it is to be, it's up to me. That's it. I, I look at myself in the mirror and my dad, grandma's like, hey, look, dad always say, man, son, if it is to be, it's going to be up to me. And he'd tell me, get up in the morning, look at yourself in the mirror and say, if it is to be, it's up to me. And I just, you live by that every day, even when I have the bad days. Because, man, life don't go what you want. Life don't go the way you plan it. It doesn't right. happen. You got to have that determination. You got to have that willpower. You got to be able to look and say, man, yesterday's history. Tomorrow's a mystery. Today's a present. It's a gift. Live in it. And people don't take advantage of those opportunities. Right. Isn't it crazy, though, once you Shout out them? to Kung Fu Panda. Um, that was my favorite film. Yeah. My little girls. Yeah. Love it. Oogway. Oogway said that in Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> 
I, I, I get the, I get the, <laughs> the, 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 my yeah. bad dog. Yeah. yeah. Like I got excited. Yes. He gonna do it again. Though. I know, he, I know. He, he I do know. it all the time. I just gotta <laughs> All right. I just let him let him do his thing. You know what I'm saying? You like that pit bull with the with the no no collar on. You just do your own thing. I just let you do it. Thank you. I just let you do it. Thank you. I was gonna say once you got the first Pro Bowl, the other the other two or three, they just kinda they just they just right. flowed, right? People right. recognize your right. game and, and your game in the in the process. Yes. That's all I got. I mean, I it, I don't, well, Sean don't Payton used to always say how, you know, your first Pro Bowl usually comes after your really good year. You usually don't make it on your first time having a big year. And then it usually comes after that. Right. And then once you get one, you'll get two and three. Right. And you'll probably go to one that you don't even deserve at the end. Yeah. Like somebody will, you'll usually get in once you become a Pro Bowl guy at the end of your career or one year when you probably don't deserve it over another kid that's in their first really big year and you'll get in over them. So yeah. that's how the NFL kind of keeps it. I, yeah, it it does. It it does. But I, you know, and I'll take it. I'll I'll take it for all the too. years. Yeah, for all the years they didn't get us. Exactly. Right? <laughs> exactly. I'm getting mine hey, on the back. Hey, end. you see this guy? See this guy? Throw that throw that salt. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, there's probably some years you should have been. No, no, it's not, bro. No, we no. Sir, <laughs> we earned everything. I say, see, man, we earned baby, everything. I, bro, P, I see on how you, P, yeah. he rough. I he see what you're dealing with, man. He is. Man, he is. He slide oh him God. in there. He lightweight, mm-hmm. lightweight snitching. Okay, yeah. Put that in there. Oh, turn it real quick on you. That was good, good how you set that up, though, bro. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I'm just sprinkle it in there. <laughs> so let's talk about this neck roll. Oh. Safeties, notorious for wearing neck rolls. <sighs> Linebackers, notorious for neck rolls. You ain't never wore one, have you? Hell no. Okay, my bad. That <laughs> was not offensive. <laughs> If I wear a neck roll, I'm throwing at that guy. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. If you see a DB with a neck roll, yeah, throw at him. Right? They are yeah, throwing they, at him yeah. immediately. He can't, he, can't twist, <laughs> he can't get it right. Yeah. No, yeah. Dude, it's, he's it's getting it. thrown at immediately. First place. <laughs> from jo- check, 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 oh. check. <laughs> check. And point at him, right? Oh. And they point, going right at that guy. At oh right God. at that guy. No way. No. <laughs> Don't even come over here. No. I guess my so for those listening and if you're watching, the neck roll was like literally it's just like a it looks like a white towel that you literally right. put behind your right. neck and you had some shoestrings and it just no doubt tied was, it in. You just tied it in yeah. to the jersey. It in. Tied it in. Wove in. Did it really help you when you wore it? Man, I went to I went with the cowboy collar later on. You didn't I didn't win the neck roll. I had the, that, the roll. The roll. The straight, the straight yeah. The straight one? Yeah. 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 Like like Beacocks? Not Beacocks. I had the, the cowboy. It's, it's a cowboy. It's like a cowboy collar. So it's kind of like, you know how the dogs got those collars on when they get this, when they can't Like scratch. the cone? The yeah. cone. Okay. So it doesn't go around you. Yeah, yeah, just go it, in these right here. Mm. So it goes all the way. And it kept that big rock. That was my moneymaker. This so right you, here was a moneymaker. Okay. So I'm coming downhill. So you had the 180 cone, 180 yeah. degree cone. Yes. Okay. Yes. The neck roll don't work as good as that. Back in the day, I used to, you know, ED, Eric Dickinson turned me on that neck roll because he's, you know, Eric Dickinson, 29, he stood up. Hey, hey, he, he run smooth. pretty too now. Oh, he run pretty now. I used to try to break down like ED, get ran down. Though. I was getting ran down. Because that's what, you running pretty. Speed. No, no, because I was running pretty. You got to get ugly to run sometimes. <laughs> you, you try to run like ED, ED could do it like this. Yeah, man. he was yeah, pretty. He pretty. pretty running. And I used to get out like that. I'm like, man, they're coming again. But if I get if I get that little buck to it, okay, cancel Christmas. I'm gone. That's the Adrian Peterson. Adrian Peterson. <laughs> Adrian, ugly. He does run ugly. Yeah, he does. Yeah, it ran but when that hair go to Bob, and it's a wrap. 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 There you go. Yeah, it's a Christmas. It's a wrap. Okay, so I I love this. I mean, I we've never actually talked about neck rolls on this show. This is really good. This is really good. Yeah. Also, the difference between yeah, the, the, cowboy the, bo- the cowboy yes. collar, the, the board. Neck- yes. The board, right. yes. The board was a big thing. Derrick Brooks was another yes. guy who was a board yes. guy. B. Cox was a board guy. And on the board guy, now you can't, the only thing, Matt, you can't look back as much either. Uh-huh. It, really, it stops you. It really stops you. You know, it impedes your, you know, range of motion big time. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. So that's tough. And the reason why I, I knew I wasn't getting the ball. So, man, I, you know, I just didn't the little, you know, I'm Ram Man, you know, so I <laughs> Ram Man. That's, that's, that's <laughs> Juggernaut. Yeah, 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 Ram Man. That's, it's called Juggernaut, man, because I just I'd go and then when I get down, I'd squat and boom, just jump right into him. I'd headshot. I couldn't play in this game now because yeah. I led with my head. 
I'd run and I'd get close and I just, you know, I'm already short, like you said, and then I just drop my hips, boom, I'm running, drop hips, boom, and explode through you. Boom. Yeah. And like, short, ah. Short, quick. Yes, sir. Explosive. And I let him feel it now. Yeah. <laughs> like, the way you're describing it. I mean. And as he's looking us up, like, I'm like, okay, yeah. yeah. I'm not saying I was looking, but his chest popped really hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, whoa. I wasn't looking, but hello. <laughs> yeah. It, I wasn't looking, but. <laughs> all right. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's it. Uh, that was it. I, I think we played y'all in O. Four oh three or something like that, probably my rookie year. I, I think we had like a it was a toss or something like that on my side. I I got that business. I was a corner who played cover two, and I had to you know hammer everything back inside to the to my defense, and it didn't end so well for me. That's when I was like one hundred ninety six pounds. I was just frail, just skinny, narrow. Y'all played in in Diego. Yeah, we said San Diego. Yeah, in oh my God. yes, in got, Diego. got me good. You know what? I I called one of the guys, man, because. Uh, that was one that I, that I, that he thought it was a cheap shot, but it wasn't. I, no, it, it wasn't a cheap shot. It just was good old fashioned football. Just the best man won, and I. I no, just, one of you guys blew out his knee that game. Oh, it wasn't me. No, I know it wasn't you. <laughs> no, it wasn't you. No, it wasn't you. And God, it was not, it was uh, the one of the safeties was playing you guys and you guys and the coach got really mad. It might have been what year was it? God, I forget. It wasn't Mike Brown, was it? Mike Brown did tear his knee up one year. So that might have been 07 then. Oh, it was 07. Yeah, it was Mike Brown 07. We played y'all in San Diego. Yeah. Mike Brown. Mike, yeah. Brown. Mike I, Brown. I remember Mike B when he tore his. Yeah. Tours I remember his. calling yeah. him and saying, man, sorry about that. He, you know, he was, uh, yeah, I played. And I was like, man. I, I was like, yeah, Mike Brown. Yeah. Yeah. I'm well, talking about 03. Y'all played Oh, us. yeah. I think it was 03. Y'all played us in Chicago. And, uh, yeah, he gave me the business. Hey, man. Sometimes well, you get the bear. Sometimes the bear gets you. There it is. Yep. Man. You know? Congrats, dog. We got the bear. <laughs> Congrats. All right. I want to go. Big bear, Thomas. Well, when, uh, oh, big, bear. big bear. Big brown bear. All right, Lo. When did you know it was time? Like in 2009, oh. when it was time to retire? Yeah. Uh, you played 17. I was. Like, that was year 17. I was with the Raiders, and I remember going out to practice and just like just walking out, and it's just different. Things slow down. You see the young guys running around. Let's go. Training camp. You're going. My hamstring was tight. And I remember, like, going on kickoff, and we would do the drill. You know, where you, you get in front of a guy, and the guy's got to run around. You got to catch him and set him up and block. Mm -hmm. He's running behind you, and you got to turn, set the wedge. And so you do that. And I remember running, like, man, can I get there? I remember, and then I remember playing nine on seven, and we had a toss play, and it's like, okay, toss crack. And it's like, okay, I looked out there, and I'm like, okay, I got to get there. I started thinking instead of reacting. Mm -hmm. And you know, you, you know what I'm saying? You mm -hmm. get to that point where you're like, okay, I'm lined up. Okay, boom, I got to make my hips. Can I do? And you start thinking about what you're doing instead of when we played football, you've always just reacted. And once that happened, man, I said, oh my goodness, I'm thinking. I'm thinking out here. I'm still, I can still be physical. I can still, but I have to think about my position. I got to think about too much instead of just running up and going and reacting. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, this is it. This is this is you know you just kind of know and you're just like man, all good things must come to an end. Were you ready to accept it? I was, but I wasn't. Sometimes you just do things because you just you you know like I said earlier, it's not the crash that kills you, sudden stop. <clears throat> you don't know what's next. You 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 dibble. So you got to realize that's why I talked about you know when I talk to military guys and different things. What are we do? We're taught when to go be at practice. What time the bus leave? Structure. Get structure, all that stuff. When the training camp, when they're eating, what, who's getting taped, who's what, who's what. Same thing in the military. Live in the barracks, you're doing boom, boom, boom. You're someone, and you're someone in the military. Yeah. Boom. You're a commissary. You're big time. You're a chief. You're petty officer. You are the man on that base. Football, boom. You're someone. You go to the stadium. So, yeah, you get to go. Your own doctors. You don't freaking have to go wait in line. You call your team call. You go to the doctor. Your family, boom. Go to the doctor. They got it set up. You're someone. You have all those <laughs> things. What happens when you're done? They take that jersey from you, and then you just have your name. Who are you? Who are you? And that's those things that, guys, it's, it's tough because of the fact there's no there's no succession plan. There's no, oh, this is what you do. Yeah, they'll talk about it, but you're playing football. You're in your you're in your window, and you don't understand. You don't see what it's like. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, boom, you go to a stadium. You go to banks, whatever. They give you what you want, and now all of a sudden you're done. It's like, okay, who are you? What are you doing? No, you can't get to the front of the line. Oh, no, the help. Where's your friends? Where are these people at? And then all of a sudden you realize how dark it can be. And you're like, man, who am I? Where, where, where am I going? What is my process? And you're like, man, am I still depending? And now you're like, because you depended on that structure, where to go, how to, and then you knew what you played a game. And now you don't have that. 
and who's got you. And now you don't have those things, and it's like, oh, my goodness, and people really don't care. You had coaches, trainers, what, they'd be on you. And now it's just like if you decide to get in a hole and crawl up there and die, so be it. No one's going to be there. So that way I think those are those moments that you're like, okay, I have to make sure that I have some balance. I have to make sure, okay, when am I, you know, what am I going to do to make sure – that I don't have to depend on anyone because it's tough to go out there after you've been playing and doing stuff and then beg, hey, can I get a job? Go, I do this. And how do I do this? And you, you're a grown man playing a kid's game, getting a king's ransom, and all of a sudden you're making millions of dollars and now it's 50000 60000 70 okay, 100 if you're lucky. It's different. How was it for you those first couple of years out? It was weird. It was weird to watch football. You did, I think about, since I was five, six years old, I played, mm-hmm. I, I played football. And wrestle. So I, since I was a kid, I did it. And then you're 38, 39, and now you make that transition. And while I was playing, I, I was able to buy some houses. And I'm my buddy Matt and my dad. So we, so I was buying real estate. But it's still, I was, I was still off season. I'd go home and work on. But it's still, I knew that I only did that for three or four months, and then I was gone back to my my job. Yeah. So you know, I so I was doing that. So it was just. But then once I got out, it's like, okay, I'm working on these houses off season. Okay, season start. I'm still working on these houses. I'm still, you know, doing other things. And it's like, it was just different. And so I started getting into radio and doing some TV in the Bay and working with the Niners Raiders and doing those things. So it was okay, but you still, it's a, still a void. It's still a void. It's still a void because you can't walk in those locker rooms. Think about guys. You're laughing with guys, joking around with guys. Oh, go, okay. It's, it's, you know, Tuesday, you know, off day, Friday or whatever. You go out with the boys. It's just a different thing. And if you had a problem with someone, on the field, okay, practice, receiver, okay, let's go. And you do, you go do your thing, you get him or he gets you, corner, whatever it is. You knew how to squash it or knew how to handle it on the field. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now you walk in the business world, oh, my God, hey, Lorenzo, I want you to invest in this. Invest in a restaurant. Hey, a good friend of mine, let's do this. Oh, boom, here's the ROI. Look at the gross multiplier. You look at the things. You start looking at this. Okay, what's this cost? And all those things. And you start, you're in this extra space now and you're doing it. Oh, $700,000 later, you lost. I can't go kick your ass. I can't go on the football field and go and take that out on you. I, it's different. And now you're in a world where people are sharks. They're out to get you. You you know, okay, I'm going to take advantage of you. And if you ain't prepared for some of those ups and downs and those those ups and downs and those woes, yeah. it can eat you up. And I think those were those tough things and those are those things that guys, you know, have to, you know, have to be prepared for when they leave this game is because now you have to realize you're going out there, you might have a couple bucks in them, but People want it and think that they can get it and tell you that the next thing since sliced bread and they're going to tell you what you want to hear and do those things. But you got to that's when you got to have good people in your corner. Are how are you going to vet that? What is the process in which you develop to say, okay, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I got to see this is a bad check. That's a bad check. How do you find that out? Who's teaching you? Because you take that game of hard knocks, you can't go back in the league and make three, four million again. No, nope. if you lose it, you lose it. <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> that's a lot. But I think I think we feel and understand everything. You sure, oh, yeah, you I've, I've lost a little bit. That's why I'm like, damn. Yeah, you right. Uh, I did the same thing. <laughs> no, okay. we all you right. <laughs> damn, you right. I, I want it. So technically, I could have <laughs> the, the money that I lost in that investment. I could have yeah. took him over the field and did what I wanted to do. Right. Yeah. But I probably would have got arrested. Yeah, I wish. Right. But he's I, right though. I wish I could have just like, okay, this. Money Owe me money, and we on this line right Thank now. Thank you. So he about to catch these hands, bro. <laughs> okay, you don't want this smoke, right? <laughs> yeah, bro. Like, I'm. I wish. I was like, dude, I, I, I'm with you. Yeah. That, like, Paul. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh. And if you win, and you know, and think about it, if you lose, you lose. It's fine. It's fine. But, but I, don't just do me. Don't just do me dirty yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I'm yes, still I looking do. for him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Exactly. All right, you. I know where my guy lives. He lives in San Francisco. I'm just saying. I I know where he lives. I I haven't done anything. Right, before. right, right. Nor will I. Right, right I got you. Yes. I've yeah. stopped following yeah, him I, on Instagram. I, yes, yes. yes. Uh, <laughs> you don't follow him to the local supermarket any nah. longer. <laughs> you know? Um, you yeah. got a a saying you like to use. It says, uh, "Don't let your condition dictate your position in life." Yeah. And um, how do you use that mentality to propel you to your success that you've had in your second act, doing some real estate and other things? Also, uh, sharing your 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 stories in the media space. Yeah, you know what? I think that I tell people: don't let your condition dictate your position, because we all have come from different places. But is that going to dictate what we want to really do in life? And that's what so many people do: is say, "Well, man, this is my condition. I come from a single family home. I do this." And and yeah, don't leave. That it is it is harder to overcome. And I hate when people say, well, he did it. And those 
Some people are built different, yeah. and everyone says, "Oh, well, yo, you should, you should look, look at that guy." Where you hear certain guys and certain people, and I think it's very condescending when I hear individuals say, "Well, he made it. You could be like that guy or do that," and and, and they don't understand the mindset, and they don't understand those other. Maybe that person did make it because they had great coach. Maybe they had a great other people that surrounded them, and the other ones didn't. Yeah. So it's so hard when I hear that people put people in those boxes like that. So my thing is like, man, it's about working. It's about. I know where my position, where I want to be. And that's why I continue to work. Um, you know, me and a couple of buddies up, well, just invested in a franchise called Hotworks. You know, and it's like, you know, give me, open up, a, you know, the Hotworks gym, going to do three of those. And it, But it took work. It took commitment. It's been watching this, 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 this franchise evolve and saying, okay, how do I get involved in this? How do those things? So I just look at it every day, bro, is I'm like, I'm going to keep grinding. I'm not going, I'm going to lose. I'm going to lose, but I'm going to keep getting up. Because yep. when you stop fighting and you stop, then you become complacent. It's so easy to say, okay, you know what? Hey, I got 30 properties. You know what? I, you know, I'm living, you know, 15, 20 grand. And, and it's like, okay, is that, do, do you just want to keep existing? I still got fight in me. I still want to, you know, and, and that's where I said at my position, I want, I want more. And not just <clears> me. I want, I want it for my family. I want it for my brothers, my sisters. So it's like, I work because I want, it, it, I want a better life for everyone because if you have everything and your f- close friends, your family and the other ones don't, how it's, fun it's, is it's, that? It's, how fun is that? It's not fun. It's not fun being around people that you don't really want to be around because they have it and you're doing things that you know that you wouldn't be doing because you're in that clique or in that group. And you're like, man, I, I don't, how do I bring my friends? How do I bring the people that I love right. and how do I put them, <clears throat> don't let their condition dictate their position? How do I make them rise up in a position? What am I doing? How am I educating myself? What am I doing? Grant writing, doing other stuff, bringing other people around and say, how do I employ? How do I employ and say, okay, hey, bud, you know what? Hey, this one I'm paying 30,000 taxes. Well, I'm going to give you a $30,000 job. So now I'm going to get that $30,000 write off. How do I do those things that saying, look, you got to pay them anyway. You're going to give it to Uncle Sam. So why not give it to the individual? So now, boom, did you get in the He's right up there's all kind of things that you just got to explore there's all right. kind of things that we have to do to work so i just keep grinding to try to get a better position not just for me but also those who i love so rome has like 30 jobs over here working at the sec <laughs> network like dude is he he's, yeah. he's grinding all the time he is in the media he's got all types of Media ventures. I guess my question to you was, what other media ventures do you have? Are you like my guy right here with twelve jobs? What, 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 what are yours? I'm the jack of all trades, the master of none. I, I work for. Um, I do the Chargers Believe. Yeah. So I do the Believe Network. So we're you know all the Bally's shows. So I'm on that. I, I work for 95.7 The Game, doing football season. So I do a two hour show there, post and a pre show, and do some radio there, and then. I'm back in the Bay. I do uh, work with the Niners. I do some TV KPIX, so I do a TV show there. Mm-hmm. Um, so and I just oh, he kind of is like me. Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, really, kind of like me. That yeah. was why I prefaced the story. I'm no, 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 I'm like, hey, yeah, kind of is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> then I do multifamily homes. I'm doing, I mean, commercial and, re- and residential. So I build and buying dirt lots, I flip houses. I just buy and sell, flip, look at a house, go and put an offer in on and. St- Sometimes I stand at the courthouse and bid on it. Sometimes I get them. Sometimes I don't. And I develop land. Look at, I have some commercial land that, you know, that it was, I bought it ag culture. Now mm-hmm. it's annexed into the city. So now it's, you know, we went from being ag, now I'm worth commercial. So now, you know, value went up. So, <coughs> cha-ching. <coughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Gas station wanting to come. So it's people knocking yeah. on the doors and stuff. So it's, it's, it's good. It's good to be one. Gas stations and Chick Fil A's. You never don't answer Man. that call. Mm. That part. <laughs> that don't. part. Everybody loves Chick Fil A. Huh. Everybody loves Chick. And it, they it, don't work it, on the Sabbath. It, uh. And so it's like yeah. gas station, yeah. Chick Fil A, and a Publix. Publix. These these jokers are great. Mini Mini Storage. You can't go wrong. Oh, Mini Storage has the best uh, uh, ROI. I'm looking at. I have a piece of land. I'm looking at Mini, but. There's a guy in town that it scares me because there's no overhead. The overhead so low. Any storage is a cash cow. Yeah, my mobile, my, my mobile, boys mobile got a couple. <laughs> look at Mississippi. Look at some other places, man. Mobile homes are there's, really good too. There's, yeah, mobile homes. Whether you provide them or they bring them in, exactly. Yeah. There's some money out there, brothers. Let's go. I'm waiting on y'all. I'm with it. Let's go. <laughs> I'm with it. I'm with it. Well, Lorenzo, man, this is my last question, man. You uh, sure? I promise. Okay. Well, unless Bad. you give me too good of an answer, okay. then I'm probably going to jump back in. All right, all right. I, I'm sorry, Thomas. And then this Thomas is going to be mad and he's Yeah, yeah. Go <laughs> like, this is me. I love Thomas the Train. That's a great show going on. <laughs> um, 
So that was our man, man. We're good, man. We're good. <laughs> how, who, how, who, how, oh, how yeah. many, how, who. and who done it? But <laughs> the, the question <laughs> is, <laughs> who is on your personal Mount Rushmore of accomplishment that have poured into you to make Lorenzo Neal who he is? You got four, um, and you know it's catered to you however you want to do it. But on the who's field, on your Mount Rushmore? Yeah, uh, uh, for me, <clears throat> watching growing up, I mean. My father, he was he was a minister, and my grandparents. Preach you know, kid. Yeah, I was a PK, and I was bad, but but a lot of yeah yeah exactly. You know, you, look, Monday was prayer meeting, Tuesday was Bible study, Wednesday was brotherhood, Thursday was missionaries, Fridays we had young people, Saturday sometimes every fourth Saturday we had a fellowship meeting, Sunday morning Sunday school, then you had worship service, then Sunday night uh, we had young people Sunday night. Then we had the service after some young yeah. people. So we was going to church six days I a get week. it. I remember telling my grandma, I said, grandma, we go to church so much. I think I'd just rather go to hell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just too much. It's, okay. it's too much. Too much. Peter said, Peter said, Peter said, I get it. Peter said, I get it. I, get it. Like, I, get it. <laughs> I just want to go to hell. This ain't even worth it. Ain't it. It's too much, Grandma. Just go to hell. This is too much. <laughs> Satan, where you at? <laughs> get behind me, Satan. <laughs> <laughs> no, but my mom and dad were great role models. You know, married 50 years, lost my father in 2015, 16. And uh, grandparents, man, they were they were unbelievable. I think Muhammad Ali, what he did, and you know, still watching him and growing up watching this guy, you know, fight when he fought Larry Holmes, I cried. I was a huge boxing guy, loved it watching, you know, like Ray Leonard. But growing up, I mean, as far as football, believe it or not, it was Dan Falks watching the Chargers. Oh, wow. I loved Danny Falks the way he backpedaled and the way that he, you know, he had Chuck Muncy, Kellen Winslow, Charlie Jordan, West Chandler. I was freaking infatuated with the Chargers, so got to live my childhood dream. So. Parents, of course, grandparents, and, you know, and I think the biggest thing is just the belief. I think the belief in God, just those those values, the moral values that you you get from your parents and just about belief. So I think we're all blessed, and sometimes we don't deserve it, but I believe, I just choose to believe in a higher power, and I think that's the reason I think that I have success, because I, I try to treat people well and try to do the things that I'd want people to do to me. I, but I totally believe it. There it is. I like it. You done with your questions? <laughs> Zip. <laughs> Nothing. This is great. Zip. Follow. I mean, you know, I kind of could. I could always say something. <laughs> you could, <laughs> but we not because Thomas is yelling in my ear like, "Don't let him speak. Shut him up. <laughs> wrap it. Wrap it. Wrap it." It's a wrap. It's a wrap. Oh man, look. So thank y'all for listening. Thank y'all for tuning. Low man, I appreciate this. Been awesome. Man. Great energy, great, dog. Lorenzo Neal, man. Appreciate this you, is hey, appreciate you, Pete. This is dope, man. Thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for listening. Uh, make sure you uh like, share, subscribe. Follow. Make sure you go to leave Apple. a comment. Oh, I'm sorry. Leave a comment. Five star rating. Five star rating. And leave y'all tips too. Share, fight, fight. <laughs> Share, like, follow. Everyone's like talking to me in my ear, and I'm trying to get this without messing up. But totally, y'all are killing me right now. Um, Apple Podcasts, iHeart app. You can get all the information right there. This is the NFL Player Second Acts Podcast. I'm Peanut. That's Rome. Pepto Bismol. Pink Harper. Pink That's my Harp. guy. That's my guy, Lorenzo Neal. Hey, y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in. This has been awesome. This is a great week. We it out was here in good. LA. We doing our thing in the studios out here. L.A. West Coast office. It's been a blast. Thank y'all. We out. How about I wanted to say something? Oh, go oh, ahead. You want to say something? Yeah, okay. I want to wrap it up. Just want y'all to know this is Lorenzo Neal, number 41 in your program, number one in your heart, and you listen to NFL Players Second Acts. Oh! 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 Yo! That hurts. Drop the mic. Uh, drop it. Watch out. Watch out, boy. Oh. Oh. That's the first ever. Okay. We was going to come so in. We, so, we, uh, so normally yeah. we was going to ask you to do a come show, on, but you bruh. did it in the show. Bruh. Yo, I'm Pete, dropping the Pete, mic. Pete, come, on, come, come on. on. Even you cut Thomas off. Thomas, Thomas, Thomas come, come on. on. Come on, baby. Come I'm on, bring it, it in here, Thomas. Uh. You should just go tackle him right now. <laughs> go tackle him like it's a lead. Just go hit him right now. Like